Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums, to I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys and the viewer verse, I want to talk to you about my wish list for 2025. Now, I do these each year. Now, I did a wish list for 2024, and inside of that wish list, I asked that we get some sort of boss creatures or fauna, larger fauna that we can do battle with, and Liquidators brought us that. Brilliant, eh? So that's a thumbs up. That's one thing off my checklist. I also said that I like planets to feel more organic, more alive, and give us more to keep us busy on the planet's surface. And I think Worlds Part 1 delivered that in spades, especially when now all the trees move and buffer inside of the wind and stuff like that. And funny enough, I hit on up previous trailers of yesteryear and actually showed rain and, and weather effects and said that the planets inside of the original trailers looked far more organic and alive. I think Worlds Part 1 has upped that. I think it has done it and done it better. So hats off, hello games, salute to Mondo. So my main wishes for 2024, I feel got delivered in 2024. There was a few things that didn't come into iteration so one of the things i mentioned was it'd be nice to be able to go into the realm of glass which has been heavily hinted at in 2024 but it didn't quite arrive so in 2025 i'd like to see that actualized i'd like to see the realm of glass come into play i'd like to see the storyline of the void mother concluded you know, we've had the ARG parts 1, 2 and 3. We haven't had part 4. I want to see that happen. I would like to see the Ariadne weekend lore that we had from like 2021 actualized as an actual physical story or some sort of really cool expedition to have it delivered in. Um, it would be nice to run it anytime we want though, you know, from say Ariadne maybe. Wet the old whistle with a cup of tea. And got a bit of a horse in the throat. <laughs> Still have, actually. Here you go. Let's go for another one. Lovely, lovely. Now, you can start typing. Start typing in the comments. Let us know what you would like to see happen in 2025. Now, something that we got delivered in is the ability to customise our starships, which is another thing that's been on wish lists of mine in previous years. And with that, you know, that's pretty darn freaking awesome. The only trouble is, is we've only got limited ship slots. And if I want to make a load of custom ships, you need a, at least one free slot to do that anyway. I feel Hello Games needs to have some sort of different slot system when it comes to how you go about storing ships. It'd be nice if we had another separate sub area for just stowing away ships that we want to scrap. Some kind of scrap storage slot that's a free slot anyway, you know, and maybe have three of them since you need mainly three ship slots free to scrap. So a scrapping ship slottage sort of sub area where if you do decide actually no I want that as a main ship you could swap it over with one of your main ships perhaps like a sub archive but I feel we need far more ship slots or if not more ship slots sometimes when it comes to make that hard decision I have to scrap one of my old ships you know I've killed loads of pirates in it I've been with that ship for some time I would like the ability rather than to scrap that ship to turn it into a base part so I could put it down at my base on a plinth or on a, a fake landing pad that's got a sh got a little screen that when you hit it up it tells you how many kills, how long I had that ship for, you know what missions I ran with it, something, some sort of graphical display as like a like almost like a museum piece. Or if not that, maybe even just the ability to turn it into a wonder projection. So the ship is just as a wonder projector item. And I feel the same would be nice to have with the multi-tools. Again, I've got a kinship with certain multi-tools. It'd be nice if you could mount it on a wall. And again, when you interact with it, it tells you how many sentinels you took out, how many creatures, all that sort of shenanigans, monstrosities, blah de blah de blah Or what freighters you ran with it, derelicts, you know. So something like that. Museum pieces for old items or just more slots. Because again, with the multi-tools, there's so many multi-tools now, including the staffs, that it'd be nice to have a few additional slots. And the same with pets. Pets. Because we've been given so many pets as expedition rewards, all of my older pets that I've got kinship with, I'm having to release. It'd be nice to have some sort of fauna pens 
that we can put our fauna in that we don't want to use for a while just to sort of have them as like a mini zoo maybe on our freighter or on our bases planet side when people visit our bases or freighter they can see these little menageries that'd be quite nice and also if you do put them in a menagerie maybe they could lay eggs so if people come to visit and they see that you've got this lovely pet they could say oh i wouldn't mind an egg of that boom get an egg maybe they pay for it in quicksilver and then when i go back to my menagerie i can say oh someone's had an egg oh i got myself 50 quicksilver for that freaking awesome because you know what all my flying bird pets that I got off Miyogi all those ta that time ago, I'll put those in the menagerie so people can come and get flying bird eggs whenever they want. Freaking awesome. So yeah, hello games if you're watching. We definitely need more pet, multi-tool and ship slots or some way of maybe turning those items into base parts or having like a menagerie, like I say, as a, as a, like a temporary hold area for that thing. And then we can bring it back out of archive whenever we wish. So there you go, that's something that I'd like to see. Now something on my wish list for 2024 that didn't make it in on 2024 is the ability to make custom missions that we can share with other players so they can go out and run those custom missions. I feel if Hello Games are to move away to Light No Fire or move more of the team to Light No Fire, then if we're to be making content still for No Man's Sky, maybe move some of that onto the community. If we can make our own custom missions, our own custom objectives, maybe if we can host our own hubs, maybe the players can keep No Man's Sky going and keep the longevity of the game there. Why people move about in the teams of Hello Games onto Light No Fire and deliver stuff there. So there you go, that's another idea. More community driven items coming over in 2025 for the community to take control of. So that's another thing I'd like. Just cut there, just have a little sip of my tea. Now, they delivered in new space stations inside of 2024. They overhauled the outside and the interior, which was freaking lovely. What we haven't got is use of the station override. Now I'm hoping the station override allows us to register a station as a Galactic's hub central item and maybe link to the Galactic Atlas, register your hub. Maybe you can upload a decal for your hub and that has a chance to come into game inside of the Quicksilver store for members of your hub to use like their bases and things like that. That'd be freaking lovely. And maybe there could be a fee registration. So maybe if you do want to be a hub owner, you pay five pounds to have that decal converted and put into the Quicksilver store for your, your hub. But not only that, to have it registered on the Galactic Atlas as an official hub, and you have to enter in all the different bases that are there and so forth and so on. A little bit like we do on the Wiki at the moment. I mean, I've already done all mine on the Wiki, but it's not on the Galactic Atlas. And I don't think Hello Games has registered it. And I don't think my decal has a chance in hell of making it onto the friggin' game. But it'd be nice if it did. I can see that they're adding a load of new ones inside of the Quicksilver repertoire coming soon. So it'd be nice if there was a way to do that, to actually put it into game and all that sort of shenanigans. And for then you to have your own hub and maybe have a way to have your own Quicksilver store, list a few things inside of that Quicksilver store so the actual owner of the hub can earn Quicksilver ambiently to make it worth registering their um, hub as a hub. So maybe we could sell one custom ship that we've built ourselves, you know, and that promotes ship customization. Maybe sell one of our favorite base blueprints so I could get one of my R2D2 bases or a big mech dragon, put that in there. People can pick up the blueprint, and go to their own planet, and rebuild a Captain Steve base. That'd be cool. You know, I'd, I'd definitely go over to Beeble and see if he's put his train in there. I'd love to have WAP and just stick it wherever I like in my own hub. Heck yeah. So, you know, give people the ability to sell base blueprints and ship blueprints that'd be cool maybe even a multi-tool with a certain set of modules in there because i've got a i've got a multi-tool with an incinerator i'm fairly sure people will pay something like 500 quicksilver to have that you know so all that sort of stuff maybe sell our favorite pets like i mentioned before flying pets i'd like to put a couple of eggs in there sell those for like 250 quicksilver a throw that'd be cool so give People that own hubs, the ability to have their own Quicksilver store, their own Symphonsis companion, with their own list of things that they want to put in there. Things that they've earned through the game as a cloned item. I think that'd be freaking awesome. And that ties into having a station override and then registering against the Galactic Hub. I think that'd be freaking cool. And that will promote people to go to different hubs, sort things out and purchase things that you just can't get anywhere else inside of game. Another thing I'd like to see happen is the revamp of settlements and i think the settlements again 
I think players should be able to choose every single NPC. So as they go around stations, they can interact with an NPC. If they see a Viking, and you can bring them up and it will come up with all their stats. And it might say, you know, very good at fending off sentinel threats or threats to the base. Doesn't work well with Gex. So you know not to house that Viking in a house with a Gek or something, you know? So you actually have to look at the different stats of the different characters and what they bring to your actual settlement. And I like it that when you actually build your settlement, you can choose what its purpose is. Is it for geology and mining? Is it for flora and botany for plants? Or is it for fauna discovery? You know, and you, you sort of align it to a certain thing. And then your actual employees that you bring to the you know, your NPCs that you bring to your actual settlement they adjust those stats and the higher you get those stats in that profession the better the yield of the things you're going to get from your settlement so it makes it more of a living breathing thing and it makes you more of an overseer on who you actually go out and employ and when you do send out missions there's a chance that one of those npcs might not come back from those expeditions that you launch from your settlement so you care a lot more about each of those npcs you don't want to lose some of those stats because it's taken you ages to find all those npcs I would like it if Switch could also have access to settlements. So I think a massive overhaul of settlements and how they're actually delivered in make it so the buildings are more prefab orientated. Yes, I love the fact that you managed to do them procedurally generated, but come on, it, it, it's probably a little bit too much for the Switch. So just have a few prefab buildings that we can put down, like a geology station, like a fauna station, etc. You know, some pens and things like that. And the idea that I mentioned about having your, your Quicksilver store registered with the Galactic Hub, if you've already done that, and you already own a Quicksilver store, maybe you could put that instead of a marketplace or next to a marketplace. So, you know, people that visit your hub can visit your hub and get it there, but they can also get it at your settlement as an extra additional perk. I think that could work quite nicely. My cup of tea is nearly gone. Yes, this is the stuff that fuels my brain. Heck yeah, so my ideas from here on onwards might not be as great, but I think you get the idea of where I'm going with this. I want more community driven stuff and I want things that bring us back to a play over and over again. And I think one of those things, we've now got these new stations that have had an overhaul. They look suspiciously like the Colossal Archive. It looks like parts of the station now have broken off and flown down to the planet and that's now a Colossal Archive. I'm hoping Hello Games come up with an idea of linking the Colossal Archive more to the station. When you go to a Colossal Archive right now, you actually can see on an explorer's log inside of your um, exosuit or whatever, inside of your menu, that there is an explorer's guide. And it looks like when you go to print a chart map at the, ex the uh, actual archive, it looks like it's looking for what you've scanned and what you've done on the planet. It'd be nice with the more that you've scanned on the planet, the more that you've uploaded to the Colossal Archive and beamed to the station, the better the chart maps you get and the better the rewards you might get. It'd be nice to be able to dig up some treasure at a relic site and pick up a shader for like your multi-tool or for your exosuit or even for your ship customization to find a, an ancient wing part or an ancient cockpit or, a, or something. More to explore and more reward for exploring and scanning and cataloging and archiving things and sending it up to the station. The more you've catalogued the system, the better. And if you did this in, say, an uncharted system, perhaps, maybe you can go to an uncharted system, go into the station, send down some colossal archives and help build it out, and then maybe sell it to one of the races. Because uncharted systems aren't aligned to Corvax or Gek or whatever, or Viking. Maybe if you could get it all scanned and get it to a point where it feels charted, you could sell it to one of the races for either units, nanites or quicksilver, depending on which race wants to purchase it. I did a whole video ages ago on how to auction a system, and I still would love to see that come into game. Being an explorer, I feel I'll do that. Now, we did have an expedition called Utopia where we did exactly that. We went to an abandoned system, a part of the Utopia Corporation, scanned all the planets, got it to a point of where we'd scanned a load of stuff. And then when you go and visit that after the expedition was completed, it was no longer an abandoned system. It actually had a race there and it was a living, breathing system. I feel Hello Games played with that idea a little inside of the Utopia expedition. And I'd love to be part of the Utopia Corporation and going around doing that for any uncharted or abandoned systems in space and bringing them back into life. 
Perhaps this could be why the Atlas is slowly breaking down and the simulation has got to 1616 because there's so many infested and abandoned systems. Well, maybe we can push back the infestation, reclaim the infested planet somehow by taking out so many of the um, worm broods that are upon them or even the uh, vile broods that we're now seeing. Maybe if you take out a certain amount of them, it goes from being infested or vile brood to going back to being normal and you've pushed back the infection a bit almost like a purge in a roundabout way. We become like an antivirus, you know? I think that'd be pretty darn freaking cool. There's a lot that Hello Games can do with the way that they've moved No Man's Sky, and I'm thoroughly excited for 2025. I mean, you guys out there in the viewer verse have probably got no end of ideas, and I can't wait to read your comments that are on the bottom of this video. And I'm hoping to send this video over to Hello Games as an ideas video for 2025. So yeah, Get a type in if you haven't already, but they're my main things. They're the main things I'd like to see happen in 2025. Are they all realistic? Are they all doable? I'm hoping to at least see the purple systems come into iteration that was inside the data mining. I'm hoping that they bottom out fishing a little bit more. Fishing at the moment feels a bit shallow. It hasn't got much depth, forgive the puns. There's nothing to keep you hooked. <laughs> I could go on forever. But it'd be nice if when you actually catch the fish, you hold up the ship model, and it's like, do you want to take a photo? Yes, stick that on Reddit, you know, or wherever you want to put it. And it'd be nice if we could have an aquarium, a giant aquarium for bases, like a base park, where we can house all these fish and actually see them swimming around and maybe even dive into the aquarium, swim with them, or even maybe do a spot of fishing in our own aquarium. Or it'd be nice if we can actually build our own ponds at a base put in a load of uh, pond decals, make a nice little ornamental pond and put some of the fish in there. So when people come, they can come and do some fishing themselves and catch those rare fish that you might have inside of your pond, making it worth another base visit. So I would like to see a lot more come into base building because base building is a massive part of this community and how people like to play No Man's Sky now. We did start with four pillars, you know, explore, trade, survive and whatever the other one was and, and now we'll add base building in you know what i'm saying but there we go people that's pretty much everything i've got for you um i can't wait to see like i say what you've written and if you like this video i make videos like this all the time at least once a year for these wish lists anyway hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell and i'll see you for the next video salute to mondo goodbye goodbye and goodbye again